In 1929, when Edwin Hubble pointed his telescope at the sky, he wasn't just looking at the stars, he was observing a fundamental law about the nature of the universe. As he analyzed the spectral lines of light coming from distant galaxies, he noticed that most of these lines were red-shifted. This indicated that the galaxies were moving away from us. Until then, the universe was thought to be static. This observation didn't just apply to a few galaxies, it introduced a new idea about the structure of the entire cosmos. Hubble discovered a linear relationship between the distances of galaxies and their speeds of recession. And this relationship gave rise to what is now known as the Hubble Law, a foundational principle of modern cosmology. This law showed that the universe isn't fixed, it's expanding. The galaxies weren't moving through space, space itself was stretching. The very fabric of the universe was expanding uniformly in all directions, increasing the distance between galaxies. Redshift became the observable signature of this expansion. When light comes from a source that's moving away, its wavelength stretches, shifting the light toward the red end of the spectrum. The data Hubble collected was later confirmed by other discoveries, like the cosmic microwave background radiation. Together, they cemented the expanding universe model as a central pillar of modern cosmology. So what does this discovery actually tell us? If galaxies are receding from each other, how exactly is that motion taking place? Hubble's discovery taught us that the universe is expanding, but this expansion doesn't resemble any kind of motion we encounter in daily life. Galaxies aren't flying outward like debris from an explosion. In fact, the galaxies themselves remain in place. What's expanding is the space between them. In other words, the fabric of space itself is stretching along with time. This process is known as metric expansion. A common analogy is used to illustrate this concept. Imagine drawing random dots on the surface of a balloon and then inflating it. The dots don't move themselves, but as the balloon expands, the distance between them increases. The universe behaves in a similar way. It stretches along with the galaxies embedded within it. But there's one major difference. The universe has no surface. The expansion happens in every direction, at every point, all at once. And unlike lighter matter, this expansion doesn't travel through space, it happens within space itself. This process doesn't just increase the distances between galaxies, it also affects the light traveling across those distances. When light leaves a galaxy, it must pass through expanding space on its way to us. During that journey, its wavelength is stretched along with the universe. That's why the light from distant galaxies appears redder. In this way, redshift is a trace of both motion and of time itself. But this expansion hasn't been happening at a steady pace. Since the universe's earliest moments, its rate of expansion has constantly changed. In the beginning, it expanded much faster. During a phase known as cosmic inflation, the universe ballooned at speeds exceeding that of light. This incredibly brief yet rapid period laid the foundation for the structure of the cosmos as we know it today. Afterward, the expansion slowed down, but in our time, it has begun accelerating again. The force behind this acceleration remains a mystery we have yet to fully understand. The expansion of the universe isn't about galaxies flying through space, it's space itself stretching outward. But that raises a puzzling question. If space is expanding, what exactly is it expanding into? This is a question that challenges both intuition and scientific reasoning. Words like into, beyond, or outside only make sense if there's something outside of space to begin with. But according to modern cosmology, the universe doesn't just contain galaxies, stars, and matter. It defines the very concept of space, including directions themselves. In other words, space isn't expanding into something else. The idea of an outside to the universe has no meaning within current physics, because there is no outside. The Big Bang wasn't an explosion in the traditional sense. It was an expansion of space that occurred everywhere at once. At the very beginning, the universe was incredibly small, hot, and dense. But this shouldn't be imagined like a bomb going off from a single central point. There is no center. Every point in the universe has been expanding equally since that first moment. That means the universe isn't growing into anything. It's expanding within space-time itself, which carries its own existence. There's no direction to this expansion, no outer edge, no boundary to cross. This conceptual framework also challenges our intuitions about the shape of the universe. In everyday life, everything we see is defined by boundaries. A room has walls, a balloon has an outside, but the universe has no such outer surface because it is a structure defined along with itself. 
Asking about the outside of the universe is like asking what came before the beginning of time. The question renders itself meaningless. Just as time itself began with the Big Bang, space itself also came into existence with it. Still, within these abstract concepts, we can ask a more concrete question. Even if space is in expanding into anything, how far can we actually see? Our eyes, our telescopes, our signals, how far can they reach within this vast structure? Everything we see in the universe is limited by how far light has been able to travel to us. Our observations don't show us the whole universe, only what we call the observable universe. That's because light doesn't travel instantaneously. It moves at about 186,000 miles per second. So the farther we look, the further back in time we're actually seeing. The most distant light we can currently detect is the cosmic microwave background radiation. Light that was released roughly 13.8 billion years ago. But that doesn't mean the universe is only 13.8 billion light years across. The universe is not only old, it's also been expanding the entire time. So a photon that began its journey 13.8 billion years ago may now come from a source that is far farther away due to the expansion of space. This pushes the theoretical diameter of the observable universe to about 93 billion light years. In other words, we must account not only for the light's journey, but also for how far the source has moved away since emitting it. That means every observer located at the center of their own visible sphere can in theory observe a universe with a radius of 46.5 billion light years. At the edges of this cosmic sphere lie the signals from the earliest era of the universe. This radiation, known as the cosmic microwave background, was released when the universe became transparent about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Before that point, the universe was opaque to light. That's why the cosmic microwave background is the farthest and oldest light we can observe. Beyond that point, we cannot see directly. This limit is not just a technological barrier, it's also a physical one. Either light from beyond has not yet had time to reach us, or due to the continuing expansion of space, it never will. So what lies beyond what we can observe? Do regions outside this boundary contain other galaxies and structures similar to ours? Or does something entirely different begin, perhaps governed by physical laws unlike those of our own universe? The observable universe is not the whole universe, and what lies beyond its limits cannot simply be dismissed. On the contrary, it strongly suggests that the universe is part of a much larger structure, possibly even an infinite one. That's because cosmic expansion doesn't radiate outward from a single center. It occurs uniformly in all directions, at every point in space. If that's the case, then just like here, there could be galaxies, stars, and even life-supporting planets in regions we can't see. Their light simply hasn't reached us yet, or maybe it never will. Cosmologists don't refer to this unseen portion as the rest of the universe, but rather as potential space-time regions beyond our universe. And this definition leads us to a far more radical idea, the multiverse hypothesis. According to this view, our universe is just one part of a larger system. Like a bubble in an ocean, it could exist alongside many other universes. Some of these might obey the same physical laws as ours, while others could exist with entirely different dimensions, different constants, and even different flows of time. Even though this hypothesis cannot be directly observed, scientists have attempted to support it with indirect clues. For instance, certain symmetrical anomalies in the cosmic microwave background have raised the question, could these be collision marks from another universe? Modern theoretical frameworks, such as quantum cosmology, inflation theory, and string theories, allow for the possibility of a multiverse on a mathematical level. But so far, no observational evidence has confirmed it. Still, the potential existence of these unobservable regions makes one thing clear. The edge of the universe marks the edge of our knowledge. Where observation ends, theory begins. And one of these theories points to a hidden force that may be driving the expansion of the universe. A force that could shape not only the past of the cosmos, but its future as well. This force is known as dark energy. A supernova observation in 1998 turned our fundamental assumptions about the universe upside down. While analyzing the light from distant galaxies, astronomers discovered that the universe's expansion wasn't slowing down, it was accelerating. This observation revealed the existence of an unseen yet powerful force, and today it's estimated that about 68% of all the energy in the universe comes from this unknown entity. 
Dark energy emits no light and interacts with no matter directly, yet its effect is felt within space-time itself. According to general relativity, gravity bends space and pulls objects together. But dark energy appears to do the opposite. It pushes space apart, continuously accelerating the expansion. This suggests that the concept Einstein once proposed as a cosmological constant, and later called his biggest blunder, might actually play a central role in shaping the future of the universe. But is this force constant? There's still no clear answer about the true nature of dark energy. Is it quantum vacuum energy, a yet undiscovered field, or a built-in feature of the universe's geometry? For now, no one knows. But what's certain is that this mysterious force not only affects how the universe expands, it also shapes its structure and form. It determines how space bends, how flat or curved the universe is, and even in what direction it grows. Some recent studies have suggested that dark energy might have a changing character over time. If that's true, the fate of the universe could be far more complex than we thought. A constant dark energy would lead to an endlessly expanding universe. But if that energy increases over time, the expansion could eventually become destructive. This scenario is known as the Big Rip. So how does the universe respond to this force in geometric terms? If dark energy determines not just the rate of expansion, but the very shape of the universe, then what is the true form of the cosmos? If the universe is a structure, then it must have a shape. But understanding that shape isn't as simple as observing an object. Because in this case, we're not talking about the things inside the universe. We're talking about the geometry of space-time itself. So when we ask about the shape of the universe, what we're really asking is this. On the largest scales, is space flat, curved, closed, or open? To answer this question, astronomers examine the distribution of matter in the universe, the temperature patterns in the cosmic microwave background, and the way light bends through space. These investigations led to three primary models a flat universe, an open universe, and a closed universe. In a flat universe, parallel beams of light remain parallel forever. This implies a Euclidean geometry. In an open universe, space curves like a saddle, and light rays gradually diverge. In a closed universe, space curves like a sphere, and light rays eventually converge again. So which of these three models describes our universe? The first major answer came in the early 2000s with NASA's WMAP satellite. Then the high-resolution observations from the Planck satellite made the data even clearer. Both missions showed that on large scales, the universe appears to have a flat geometry. This means there is no significant curvature in space and that the total mass energy density is very close to the so-called critical density. But this result doesn't explain everything. A flat universe is not necessarily infinite. It could be extremely large, yet still finite in volume. And this flatness may apply only to the observable portion of the universe. Beyond our observational horizon, space could take on a different geometry. So these findings describe the shape not of the entire universe, but only of the part we can observe. The shape of the universe also determines how it will behave in the future. In a curved universe, expansion cannot continue forever. At some point, it may slow down and reverse, in a flat universe, however, expansion either remains steady or accelerates under the influence of dark energy. But will this expansion go on forever, or will it eventually come to an end? Cosmologists focus on three major scenarios for the fate of the universe. The Big Freeze, the Big Rip, and the Big Crunch. The most widely accepted scenario, the Big Freeze, predicts that the universe will continue expanding indefinitely. In this process, galaxies move farther apart, stars gradually burn out, black holes evaporate, and the universe approaches a uniform distribution of energy. At this stage, entropy reaches its maximum, meaning that no usable energy remains. Temperature nears absolute zero, matter and energy reach equilibrium, and the universe dies in a thermodynamic sense. This outcome is predicted by models in which the effect of dark energy remains constant. The second possibility proposes a more dramatic ending, the Big Rip. According to this model, dark energy becomes increasingly dominant and its influence grows. Eventually, gravitational bonds holding galaxies together break, stellar systems disintegrate, atoms are torn apart, and even space-time itself unravels. This scenario arises if dark energy behaves like phantom energy. If the universe is headed down this path, a final outcome of total disintegration becomes inevitable. The third possibility is the Big Crunch. 
According to this scenario, if the universe contains enough matter, the force of gravity will eventually slow down the expansion and reverse it. Galaxies would begin to move closer together, temperatures would rise, and the universe would contract into a point of extreme density. This would end in a high energy state, similar to the universe's beginning. Some theories suggest that this collapse could trigger a new Big Bang, implying a cyclical model of the cosmos. Which of these three scenarios will actually occur depends largely on the nature of dark energy and the total density of the universe. Current observations show that the universe is flat and experiencing accelerated expansion due to dark energy. This makes the Big Freeze the most likely outcome. But since this process will unfold gradually over billions of years, more data and observations are needed before we can reach a definitive conclusion. Yet all of these scenarios converge on one point. If time stretches into eternity, a kind of solitude emerges that surpasses human imagination. So how can we even begin to grapple with such a future? Is infinity something the human mind can truly comprehend? Theories about the end of the universe point to a physical conclusion, yet the most difficult concept we turn to in trying to make sense of such endings is infinity. Asking how far the universe expands, when it will end, or what lies within it all requires us to confront the idea of the infinite, and that lies beyond the natural limits of the human mind. Infinity can be defined mathematically, it can be placed into formulas, but it cannot truly be grasped. The idea of an infinite universe means a structure with no edge, no boundary, and no center. And this might apply not only to space, but to time as well. In other words, the universe might not only be infinitely large, but also infinitely old or immortal. Yet the human brain is built around limited experience and cannot internalize such a state. Trying to imagine a line that stretches from nothingness into infinity is just a mental exercise, not true understanding. Scientists use various tools in their efforts to comprehend infinity, observation, mathematical models, entropy calculations, and space-time geometries. But all of these serve not to reveal the essence of infinity, but to offer ways of coping with it. Just as we know the universe is expanding, but not where it is expanding into, we live with infinity, but we cannot comprehend it. True, we may never know for certain what lies beyond the edge of the universe, but questioning the boundary itself, trying to grasp infinity, and never stopping asking new questions, that more than anything else is what makes us human.